Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man here to officially launch my Antenna Man signal meter. It's one of the first consumer grade antenna signal meters on the market that's affordable and easy to use. This truly is an extremely exciting moment for me as I've worked very hard over the past year to develop and market this signal meter to help all of you get the best reception and most channels possible with your antenna. As I've said in many of my videos, using a signal meter is critical to find the best location for an antenna as moving one as little as a foot or two can have a huge impact on reception. Most TVs don't have real-time signal meters built in so you have no way to tell whether a channel is being picked up well or barely at all. My signal meter displays the signal strength automatically on each channel so you can go through and see which channels are being picked up well and which ones you might need to adjust your antenna for. Unlike more expensive signal meters, mine actually shows video from the channel so you can see whether or not a given TV station is being picked up without disruptions. In addition, my signal meter has a manual search feature that can help you add a channel that doesn't show up on a channel scan. No more blindly moving the antenna around, running endless rescans, and hoping for the best. Considering that my signal meter needs to be directly connected to a TV, it's best for use with an indoor antenna but can still be used to adjust an attic or outdoor antenna if connected to a small TV and extension cord. An additional option is to set up a video call on a laptop or smartphone pointing towards a TV to monitor the signal level of a weak channel on your phone while you adjust your antenna in a different location. Like most TVs and set-top boxes, my signal meter works with the legacy ATSC 1.0 TV standard that the majority of Americans use to access local channels free over the air. So here's what's in the box. The signal meter itself, remote control, HDMI cable to connect to a TV, bonus RCA cable if you have an older CRT TV, and the manual. On the front of the signal meter is a set of buttons for power, volume, menu, channel up and down, and OK, which provides a good backup if you lose the remote, which I know I do all the time. On the back of the unit is the coax input for your antenna, analog coax output for an old CRT TV, channel 3 and 4 selector for the analog output, and then the HDMI, RCA, and digital outputs. The display will also show the signal icon you see here, if a TV station is being picked up without disruptions, although it does not show detailed signal information like you'd see with the box directly connected to a TV. To get started, connect your antenna to the coax input on the far left labeled ANTN, connect the signal meter to your TV with the included HDMI cable, and set your TV input to HDMI, which can usually be accessed by pressing the info button on your TV's remote. When first turned on, the signal meter will prompt you to run a channel scan. Press the OK button on the remote to start the process. It will take a few minutes, but once it's finished, all the channels that are currently being picked up with your antenna will be stored onto the unit. From there, you can go through each channel to see the signal levels and what channels you might need to adjust your antenna for. As a reference, you need at least a 40% signal level for a channel to decode. A 40 to 50% signal on the signal meter represents a low signal that might go in and out frequently. 50 to 60% represents a fair signal, which is better, but still might go in and out occasionally. 60 to 70% represents a good signal that should be reliable most of the time. Anything above 70% is excellent. Now for some of you in weak signal areas, it might be hard to get the signal strength up to the 60 or 70% tile, depending on your antenna. But in general, you wanna shoot for as high of a signal level as possible. I would say a good rule of thumb is to try to shoot for a 55 to 60% signal. By default, the signal meter is shown for about 20 seconds when you tune to a channel and then it'll go away in case you want to watch that channel. You can keep it up permanently by pressing the info button once if the signal meter is already shown on the screen, or twice if the signal meter is no longer shown, which is highly recommended if you're using this as a guide to adjust your antenna rather than just going through your channels and seeing what the signal levels are. An extremely useful feature on my signal meter is the manual search. It lets you manually add a TV station that doesn't show up on a channel scan by setting the RF channel, which is a lot easier 
then blindly moving the antenna around, running endless rescans, and hoping for the best. For example, let's say that my local Fox channel was not picked up on a channel scan. If I press the menu button on the remote, scroll over to the channel search menu, select manual search, set the frequency channel to 22, which is the RF channel of Fox in my area, move the antenna around until dots are shown, which represents a signal coming through, and then press OK, the channel will be added. You can find the RF channels of the TV stations in your area by running a reception report on rabbitears.info and looking at the channel in parentheses. Note that it's usually different from the channel number you're used to seeing. I include a video with instructions on how exactly to run a reception report on this website in the description of this video. You can also use this as a standalone external digital tuner connected to a TV to watch TV. The tuner sensitivity on it is excellent and can help better pick up weak channels that certain TV brands may struggle to decode. For example, it's able to pick up this out-of-market Fox channel that my new Hisense TV won't even lock in on a channel scan. Hisense, Sony, and RCA are just some of the TV brands known to have bad tuner sensitivity. If you own one of these TVs and notice that it does not pick up as many channels as another TV you own connected to the same cable from the antenna, using my signal meter as an external tuner might bring those missing channels back. A bonus feature of my signal meter is a basic recording function. In order to use it, you must connect a USB 3.0 flash drive or hard drive. Pressing the EPG button on the remote will bring up a channel guide, which usually provides about 24 hours of guide data. From there, you can go through and select programs you want recorded. Only one channel can be recorded at a time. You also have the option to record a channel as you watch it or press the pause button on the remote to enable time shifting. You can access your recordings by pressing the red PVR button on the remote. The recordings are sorted in order based on the channel name and time. Pressing the OK button on the remote plays the record program, but you also need to press the red PVR button again to have it shown in full screen. Note that this recording feature, while useful, is not going to be on par with a standalone DVR like the Tableau, HD Home Run, or zapper box as my unit has been optimized to be used as a signal meter, not a DVR. This feature should only be used sparingly. Now there are a few flaws with my signal meter that you should be aware of. If a channel goes in and out due to a weak signal, the picture can sometimes get choppy or off sync like you see here. This can easily be resolved by simply rebooting the unit. The remote also seems to use the same set of codes as some Amazon Fire TVs. For example, if I press the channel up button on the signal meter remote, it will mute my Amazon Fire TV. Punching in a channel number will also activate certain apps. If you own an Amazon Fire TV and end up in the situation, you can do exactly what I did in this video and either put the box of the signal meter in front of the remote sensor on the TV to block what's coming through, or move the signal meter to the side of the TV so that it does not pick up the remote. As you can clearly see in this video, the key to the best reception in most channels possible with your antenna is with the help of a signal meter. It's very unlikely that the convenient spot you placed your antenna near the TV, outside or in the attic, is optimal for the best reception of all local channels. Using my signal meter as a guide will help you adjust your antenna to gain more channels or at the very least, increase the signal strength of existing channels so that they are picked up more reliably. Now I understand it might be a bit of a task to use my signal meter if you have an attic or outdoor antenna considering it has to be directly connected to a TV, but as I said, you have some options. You can either connect it to a small TV with an extension cord if you own one, or set up a video call with a laptop or relative smartphone pointing towards a TV to use as a guide while you adjust your antenna that's in a different location. You can purchase the Antenna Man signal meter at antennasignalmeter.com or through the link in the description of my video. I want to give a huge thanks to all of you for the support watching my YouTube videos over the years, especially those of you who will end up purchasing my signal meter. I also want to thank Scott of Creator Lead for helping me find a supplier and figure out all the logistics that go into a product launch. You guys have no idea what all went into this. 
At the end of the day, this signal meter is going to help a lot of people improve their reception to successfully cut their cord with an antenna, and it wouldn't have been possible without Scott's help. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about the signal meter, how it works, or help locating the RF channel of a specific TV station in your area for the manual search feature to finally lock in that pesky channel once and for all.